Hey, what's up? It's Deanna. And what I have here today is an 1890s to about 1910 antique German bisque head doll. And it was made by a company by the name of Armand Marseille. And even though it's a very French sounding name, it was a German company. And I believe Armand Marseille actually was a Russian who moved to Germany. And he had a French name. I think his family were French, but they lived in um, Russia. I'm not a too sure about the history, but nonetheless, so this doll is actually, <laughs> look at her eyes, they're quite haunting, right? They flutter open and shut, and the reason for that is because it has a leaded weight inside of there, as you can see, so when you place the doll on its back, the little eyes open and shut. So what my job is today is this is how I got her on eBay, and she's there at 370 mold, they had a 390 mold as well, which was quite popular. So the 370 and the 390 mold was really popular. And the 370 version, which is this one, was on a kid leather body. And this one is pretty neat because it has little buttons on the joint area. So you can uh, actually put her in a seated position. You can um, also keep her in an upright position. She also has little buttons so her arms can pivot out, as you can see here. And uh, she also has little buttons over here. Now look at what's uh, stuffed, how she's stuffed inside this straw, which is uh, quite neat. So these lower arms, generally they're bisque, but these are like composition. I don't know if you can see that. Composition is like a mixture of plaster and wood. And um, so what I have to do is I have to try to make her look pretty again. <laughs> I don't know if that's going to be easy. So I have to go through all... I have boxes full of dresses and all sorts of doll accessories, and I'm going to try to make this doll look pretty once again. So stay tuned, and let's see if I can actually do this. So, so far, I got uh, to this point. And so uh, all Victorian ladies wore, I think it was six layers of undergarments. Well, I don't have that many undergarments, so for now, I found these uh, antique pair of cotton pantaloons. So, so far, so good. <laughs> she's wearing pantaloons now. So now she's not um, going in commando. <laughs> she's got panties. And I have a pile of antique white wear dresses. And so, I mean, I'm going to go through all of these dresses that I have here to find which one will fit her. And hopefully, I have an old antique coat over here. Maybe that'll fit as well. And uh, let's get going. Now, the only thing I don't have for her is socks and shoes, so that sort of sucks. But uh, let's get to it and let's see if we can make her pretty again. So out of all those piles of antique white wear dresses, which otherwise are known as basically their chemises, I believe they call that. It was like almost like an undergarment, like a little cotton little undershirt slash dress in one, all in one. So, so far this one looks like it fits her the best. And it is a little oversized, except for the sleeves do fit well. And it just about, uh, you know, is above her feet, which is good because then it would be too long. And I don't know how to sew, <laughs> so I wouldn't be able to hem it. And uh, it looks like it's fitting her very nicely. Now, there's this coat over here that I have. It's an antique embroidered linen cotton blend coat. Look how pretty that is. And I just, it, it was really for a baby back in the uh, late Victorian, early Edwardian time. And I'm hoping, it, it is a little long and a little big. I'm just hoping I can get it to fit her. Maybe I can make a little um, adjustment. I can tie a ribbon around the waist to make it shorter and blouse it up a little. All right, so stay tuned and hopefully she'll start to look even prettier. So um, the coat is a little too big on her. Um, it's just, you know, it's a little, little too long and too big, but it still looks pretty. It looks like, um, almost like, an antique, what's known as a wrapper dress. And ladies used to wear those um, around the house. It was almost like casual wear. And so it looks like a little antique wrapper dress. And uh, and then she's got her little chemise underneath. And now we have to do something about her boldness. <laughs> so I had to uh, get, she came with an original wig. I'm gonna try to comb it out and see if I can make it pretty. And then find a pretty little hat for her to give her that uh, lovely Victorian look. So let's get going and uh, I'll show you the results at the end. So this is the original wig that came with her. It has a cardboard pate inside and that little cardboard pate 
was something that because the heads of the dolls have a cutout on the top of the of the head and that would actually like close off the opening of the head that was so they can get the eyes inside the head that they had the opening and uh, so this is the wig and it's human hair now it's a little messy <laughs> So what I'm going to do is, it's, isn't that gross though? It's real people's human hair and it's a little dusty and old. And so what I'm going to try to do is use a pick and try to like, you know, comb it out. I have a comb as well. So I'm going to comb through it and try to like take the tangles and the knots out, make it pretty. If not, I may have another uh, suitable antique wig for her. And uh, okay, so I'm on to the next uh, part of this task. Stay tuned. So I did the best I could. <laughs> it was pretty mangled and tangled. And now I want to find a suitable uh, bonnet or hat for her. I have to go through my bag of tricks and see what I have. And maybe we'll make her pretty again. So I went into my bag of tricks and out of these three hats or bonnets, um, only this one is antique. And uh, I don't know which one's going to look the best on her. So I'm going to check it out right now and see what the, you know, what's the prettiest to go with this outfit, because we have pink in there. And uh, I don't know, hmm. So let's check it out, let's see. So we can do this. We can do this. Hmm. Too bad it's yellow. I don't see any pinks in there. That would have been pretty. Well, we can do this. Oh, <laughs> she's losing her hat. It doesn't want to stay. We can do that. So out of all three of these, I want you guys to vote. Which one do you think she looked the best in? Was it the yellow one with all the uh, little applique? Was it this one, the silk uh, lavender and pink floral and lace hat? Or was it this old, old 1880s, I think they call it Chantilly lace, I'm not sure. Oh no, I think Chantilly lace was black lace. See, I'm really not well versed in uh, Victoriana. But uh, you tell me, what do you think she should wear? And then I think our doll is done. So I asked you all to vote on which hat, but I think this one should be the winner. What do you think? Um, I mean, it has pinks in it and the hat has pinks in it. And I don't know, I guess that makes her look the prettiest. But so here she is. I mean, the coat, like the little coat is a little too big for her, but it's just like, I don't know, whimsical looking, I guess you could say. I mean, it looks pretty. So uh, yeah, so I mean, even though she, uh, what do you call it? It's not the uh, exact outfit I'd want her to be wearing. That's all I had in my bag of tricks. And I don't like having naked dolls. Having naked dolls bothers me. I uh, always like to see them wearing a Victorian type of clothing and whatnot. But I think she came out pretty good. What do you think? Write it in the comments below. And once again, thanks for watching another long, boring video by Futures Past, a.k.a. D. All right, have a great day, and I'll see you all soon.